Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge. Thank you very much for coming back and seeing me in the lodge. Uh, and today I'm going to be reviewing, again, not one homebrew game, but two homebrew games. And that's because, again, it is a series of games uh, published by Cytronic Software. And as you know, huge lover of what they do. In no way affiliated with them, but I can't help review their stuff because they keep putting out quality products from quality programmers and artists and musicians and everyone who's involved in these games so um this is two games that came out uh, in 2012 and 2021 so almost 10 year difference between these two games and i think it shows a little bit so let's jump into it um the first one is soulless as you can see there this uh very cool artwork on the front here of this creature um and the game yes yeah, soulless there and this is on tape this is available on disc as well but i picked this one up on tape before i picked up my tape drive uh, and then the second one is of course soulless 2 the armor of gods and you can see i have that one in the long box uh, disc format um, and I, again, lovely artwork on the front of that. But let's take a look at the first one first, and then we can uh, jump into some gameplay. So yeah, as you can see from the front, um, you are this her her what's the word? A hideous, hideous creature. Let's go with that. Um, which was formerly a king. Now you have been cursed by a wizard who is trying to take over your kingdom, trying to uh, do wrongdoings, and they have cursed you and thrown you into a prison in the, in the kingdom whilst they, they rule and do all of their dastardly things. And a thousand years have now passed, and an earthquake has, un has released you from your prison, and you have to go and collect the 12 soul stones to restore your soul and get you back to your rightful place as king. Never mind that a thousand years have passed by and who knows uh, what's happened since then. But that's the story and that's the story we're playing with. Um, so yes, nicely, instead of the um, artwork on the front there, this hideous creature being maybe uh, the enemy, the the boss, the, the, the thing you're fighting in this game, this is actually who you are in this game. So you are this creature. Um, it is a puzzle platformer. You're making your way through levels. You're jumping, dodging, collecting. Um, a bit like Mission Impossible, actually. The, uh, the search mechanic is very much that as you approach an object you push up to search it and you're trying to find these soul stones you're trying to find keys to doors your points and you know health bars all this sort of stuff so health potions so there's lots going on in the game um but yeah a lot of jumping a lot of moving a lot of platform a lot of dodging enemies and so on and so forth now i haven't got massively far in the game so i will jump over to the table shortly and give it a play and show you what i've played so far um but yeah so far enjoyable there's definitely some issues and i'll talk about those i'm always fair and then the second game which has obviously come nine years later uh, the armor of the gods or armor of gods and this time um after you've clearly in this game spoilers completed it and got back to your kingly form and have taken back over control of your city you're now actually on the hunt for the wizard so you know he's out there in the world and he's going for these weapons these armors of the gods uh, and other weapons to help him potentially come back and fight you again so rather than wait for that you're going to go on the hunt for him you're going to try and locate him destroy him and along the way hopefully collect the armor and the weapons for yourself so that you can rule and reign your kingdom for a lot longer to come um again platforming um searching finding things this time this armor that you can find you can get inside the armor and that gives you abilities like to hover to shoot to do all sorts but of course it requires energy it requires resources to keep using this armor so it's a balance between what can you do in your human form and what can you do in your armored form um and so on so uh, yeah look we're going to fire these up we're going to take a look at them uh, i'll quickly show you inside the tape nothing special to write home about it is just a tape with a sticker on it as you can see that we'll run on the 64 and the 128 card inlay usual affair high quality card stock instructions on how to play the game nice and simple a few screenshots on the back but you definitely probably won't be able to see that but there we go um yeah i wish that would focus but it won't do uh it's tiny so you'll see the game in a second anyway and then of course the disc we love these things in the long box form. I take it out. There's no badges or stickers in this one. Sometimes you get little trinkets, um, but no. So cardstock again, great artwork, fantastic instructions inside. And of course the game 
on the five and a quarter inch disc as you would expect this looks nice right enough talking let's jump over to the commodore it's on the table it's turned on let's get these games loaded and take a look loaded up um i hope you enjoyed the little sort of intro scene i left in there i thought it was nice to see the story because it's not often you find games especially commodore games that have like a, a whole story to tell at the beginning of the game and also the loading music the loading music is fantastic so i had to leave a little bit in there i hope you don't mind just sitting there and just quiet contemplation listening to both the story and the music but let's jump into the game now so, this is it, we're in. The fire button is to jump, so I'll just jump over this guy a few times. So you've got left, right, you use up to sort of explore areas, uh, to, sorry, to search, much like you would do in a Mission Impossible, and then jump to jump over the bad guys. Now, I have found the jumping to sometimes be a little bit quirky, so you're saying you'll get used to, but standard affair. Dodge monsters, search for the various treasures hopefully finding the keys so you like that that jump there's a little bit it can be can be a little bit tricky to land the jumps accurately there we go but you get used to it and you sort of have to pull the direction you want to jump and press fire at the same time and you can't really move in the air so you've got to be pretty accurate with your jump now i don't think i can search any of these doors no So we're gonna get past these areas first. This is kind of this, just the introduction to get you through to remembering to dodge things. Now down the bottom, you have got a health bar. It changes color where the number three is. That changes color and gets darker the more you're gonna lose life. And when your character starts flashing, you know you're pretty close to death. So you wanna try and avoid that. There is ways to get health back in this game. You can uh, search and find potions. But you saw what I said there about the jumping. Jumping can be a little bit, just a little bit getting used to. Let's 
guy's going to shoot a uh, fireball. And we're going to come across here. Now, as of yet, I haven't found an attack mechanic, and I haven't seen one in the instructions either. So it may be that you cannot attack, which is a shame for a monstrous creature like this. Now we want to guide this big mystical ball thing down so we can jump over it. Ah, oh no, I should have done that. Again, jumping mechanic. I don't know if it's me or it's a game, but I do find it difficult. So now we're into searching. So you can see that I found nothing. Found a big ruby. Found a spirit stone. So I think that is one of the first stones. Sometimes you've got to jump away and come back and sell. I let go. If you hold up, you'll find out what you um what you actually found. So I need to find a way up there later on, but we're not going to worry about that now. We're going to keep going through. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to give you a full play for. I'm trying to just give you a little bit of a tease into what the game is. But as you can see, it is about searching for treasures, searching for items. You found blue magic. Oh, that froze everybody. Okay. You found gold. You found a big ruby. Found more gold. Found more gold. You found a big ruby. Found nothing. Wait for this big guy to shoot. And a potion. Oh, pound blue magic again. So that's made everyone on that screen freeze, but clearly only lasts while you're on the screen. Keep going. So yes, whilst you're looking for these 12 soul stones, part of the puzzle is also knowing which order to put these soul stones in. And the, the game does very um, specifically point out, make a note of clues. So clearly at some point during the game, you're gonna come across clues that tell you the order in which the stones need to be placed. And, uh, oh. see what that was. I'm assuming it was nothing. Found a spirit stone. So I found a stone. Okay. And gold. So I haven't found the room that I need to put these spirits in yet. Big ruby and gold. Oh. So yeah, this this is the game as far as I've played so far. Lots of exploration, lots of trying to get around the screen, uh, trying to lure the enemies away like i say at the moment there is no attack now you may get an attack later on in the game the only reason why i'm saying i haven't seen it yet is because i literally haven't seen that this is as far as i have got into the game really just mostly exploration trying to find um there's various bits and pieces now i think this heals me i think as you can see i'm flashing red there there you go yeah so these Kind of spawn point this is a spawn point so if i was to die i would reappear at the nearest spawn point and really it doesn't matter if i take much damage here because i can stand on that spawn point and get my health back if i stand here again bend down i guess i get health so i can i can be a bit reckless with my health because i can recover
Right, so I need a key to get through there. So I'm not going through there unless I've got some sort of key. You see what I mean about the jump? The jumping, that you can't just jump up something. You have to sort of be a distance from it because the jump is going to be that long. So you can't jump and change direction. Once you've committed to the jump, you're jumping the distance. So you need to think about that and get used to how far he jumps to then judge distances in the future. Now let's see if I can lure him right down and then maybe go over his head. No! <laughs> Alright, let's go somewhere else. Whoa, that was a big fall. This is just giving you, like I said, a really quick look into the game. Uh, I would definitely say if you're a fan of games like Mission Impossible, uh, this is one you'll probably enjoy because, again, it is all about... There's a key there. Look, we found a key. So that will probably open that door we couldn't get into before. Oh. And we died. There we go. I think that's a good place to finish that playthrough. Okay, so let's take a look at Solus 2. Now, I have to be honest with you, this is the third time I'm recording this part of the game, this kind of beginning piece, and that's because of a couple of reasons. One, the first time I tried it, I died instantly and didn't think that was worth showing. Um, and the second was, I kept the reason I kept dying was because I kept hitting a dead end that didn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, and I couldn't actually get past the third screen in this game. Um, and it doesn't tell you until I looked it up in a long play on YouTube of that you can use the branches, you can jump into the trees. Now, in no way is that intuitive when you first start the game because you see it as background. So let's see if this actually... Um, one thing I will say, yeah, I can move. When I jump, I can change direction. I don't have to do that static long jump from the first game. It's got a much more friendly jump mechanic. Uh, and the fire button is free uh, for when I do get a weapon eventually in the game. Um, but at the moment, up to jump, and, and that's it. So I've got duck, jump, and my movability. But I didn't realize that, for instance, here, I'll go the next couple of screens, there was just a log that I can't get past. But I didn't realize I could do that. Now, that might be obvious to people now that are seeing it. But to me, those were background items and I thought they were just decorative. I didn't think they were actually part of the game. But now, yes, I can now jump up and go through 
uh, these areas of the game. Um, I can't go that way though. And so this is now literally legitimately the furthest I've got in the game. Um, with these uh, monkeys attacking me. Uh, although that didn't go too well, did it? Because they killed me. Very difficult game. I'm going to say this now. Uh, because some of the enemies are very erratic. As you can see. <laughs> uh, I haven't got any way of combating that. So I'm going to just go back. Try and deal with so this. I mean, how you're supposed to get past this guy, I don't know. Basically, I think you have to take a hit when you go past him. Ah, okay. So this is, and this is the log I got stuck at in the first time I played it. So I didn't real, I've just come down from the top there, and I didn't realise that I could actually go around this. So. Uh, yeah, again, another game full of exploration, but maybe could have been a little bit better to, to tell me where I could and couldn't go. Let's see if we can get back to where we were then and maybe take a slightly different route. And again, no idea how I can get past this bird guy without taking damage. That is crazy movement. It's a, it's a, it's a run and then use invisibility. Um, frames to just get by. Feel like I'm gonna take damage here regardless of what I do. throw sticks at me again lots of expert ah oh, and that's the end of the game <laughs> so um i'm actually going to cut it there because one thing i will say about this game is i've just lost all three lives it is quite a lengthy load process so that'll be one of the things i talk about when i do the wrap up but i hope you got a little snippet of the game and I will talk about it more as we wrap this up. So let's head back to the desk. Welcome back. So you just saw me playing a little bit of Solus on the C64. And of course, Solus 2, uh, the armor of gods. And uh, let's talk about them a little bit. So Solus, um, I, oh man, the music in the loading is one of the highlights for sure. Uh, and that is the big difference between picking these things up on tape and picking them up on disc. Some of the tape ones, I've got to tell you, are the homebrew tape games have amazing music during the load up. I mean, I would I would have an album of this stuff if it existed. So uh, yeah, kudos to that. But um, the game, pretty simple mechanics, right? A very much um, uh, you know just just a platform and platform puzzler with that searching element in there. Can you find the keys? Can you find the stones? to restore your beast-like body back to, to the king and, and rule your kingdom. Um, and even, as it pointed out, just collecting the stones isn't enough. Those stones have to be placed in a very specific order in the stones chamber when you eventually find it. Uh, and there are clues throughout the game to what that order is, you know? And that's a pretty large puzzle for 12 pieces um, to actually work out what it is. And it says notebook and pen is probably the best way to, to find out, um, you know, these days, you know, I'm not going to look on Google anymore, can you? Well, I hope you don't look on Google, and I hope you do try and do it with yourself, because back in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have that, that opportunity to do that. So, um, yeah, I, I like it. Um, graphics are are fine. They're not, some, they're not the best I've seen on the C64 homebrew scene, um, but they work perfectly fine. I'm a little bit disappointed, and maybe I comes later in the game, but there is no attack ability. Now, you are this... Look at this monster. This monster looks horrendous that's who you are in the game that's what you got turned into by that wizard um it would have been great if you had a claw or something you could have uh, scratched out at those uh those enemies on the screen and again i don't know maybe you collect it later in the game but unfortunately there's nothing in here that tells me that's the case because the fire button is jump 
Um, so unless a different combo comes up, it's a single button game. Um, I, I think that is it. You are just limited to your Mario style. Actually, not even Mario style because I can't jump on the heads, but uh, it is just a jump um, platforming puzzler. So uh, yeah, um, but fun. Um, I will definitely keep playing it and see if I can actually get through to the end um, because it, it seems like a good little game. Um, so on to the second one, Soulless 2, Armor of the Gods. Now remember, this was developed nine years later. My first impressions, I have to admit, I wasn't on board. Like, I struggled with the fact that the game didn't tell you uh, that you could jump on the trees, for instance. Like, it didn't feel intuitive. Like, you've got the ground, you've got your platforms to jump on, uh, and then you've got this kind of foliage in the background, although it is lit up, it is coloured, so I'll give it that. It isn't pushed directly into the background as far as I go. But I didn't, I didn't immediately go, oh, those are platforms, I can jump on those. It didn't feel intuitive for me to jump into the trees and also i'm a i'm this i'm this 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 king this man and i'm not you know jumping into the trees wasn't the first thing i thought of so when i hit that log i really couldn't work out what i needed to do so i went back and i died and i died and i died and this is the problem with the dying part of it is you've got three lives that go very quickly right you can die very fast in this game um and the loading between death and restarting the game even on disc so i'm not sure what it would be like on tape um, but even on disc is quite a, a while you know it's a good few minutes now i am okay with retro video games especially being a lover of commodore um commodore games taking a long time to load no problems whatsoever um but i've seen games that have handled this really well and get you back into the game fairly quickly once you've been through a lengthy load process so um yeah that felt a little bit long for me the the starting and stopping because of how quick you can die so you know i'm okay with dying but maybe get back into the game a bit quicker or even maybe even give you i'm not saying infinite lives but maybe more lives because then you know you, you don't you don't feel like the game ended almost quicker than it took the load so you know um, um but otherwise you know so far i haven't seen enough of the game to really rate it i haven't got as far as picking up a weapon yet i haven't seen a, a, an armor yet and had the experience of flying around in the armor and taking on the enemies um the little bit you've seen is is what i've played um but it's got it there right i love the new jump mechanic i love that it's allowing me to it's a more modern mechanic for jumping right it's not just a static distance that i jump and i can't change direction this gives you a lot more control over that jump and a lot more accuracy it's moved from the um fire button to the up some people don't like that but actually as a joystick player i'm quite used to pressing up for jump uh, i know a lot of people from joy pads and so on want up want jump to be on a button well you know commodore and amiga uh, and those sorts of systems very common if you use a joystick that up was to jump it wasn't wasn't unusual at all it wasn't until people started using joy pads for the nes and so on uh, that they expected that to be on a button so for me it's not a problem at all uh, and i think it gives you nice control because you're doing diagonally up and diagonally sort of left and right to sort of make the jumps uh, graphics you can tell it's a shift on absolutely the graphics are better than the previous game um, and you know i like the enemies i'm not sure about the crazy ostrich that we saw in the game i'm not sure what that's all about that's got a very weird maneuver i can't see how you can ever get past that creature without taking a hit and maybe that's the point maybe it's just some areas you're going to take damage and you just have to suck it up and move on and hopefully get that get a weapon to take it out later on although i get the feeling that these things will reload when you leave the screen and come back but anyway that was the two games let me know what you think about them i will definitely be playing them through um i always do whenever i pick up these games i've had these two for a little while um they're not my favorites of the uh, cytronics collection um but uh, i appreciate them they're good games and um i will definitely play them and if you like what you saw maybe go and pick them up the tapes retail for about 8.99 i think um might be even might be even 7.99 but about 8.99 i think uh, and the cd uh, the cd sorry <laughs> the discs are 14.99 for this premium edition uh, which you see comes in this gloss, glossy case um, they look fantastic um yeah that's all i've really got to say on it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like give us a subscribe there are tons of videos about all the cytronics and homebrew games i've got and there's loads of other content that comes out of the hobby lodge the hobby lodge is about many many hobbies not just retro video gaming so if you like an assortment of stuff 
take a look at what's in the playlists and and the other bits on the channel but uh, thanks for coming again and i hopefully see you soon all right see you soon bye bye